Hello, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Great Miracles Avenue. In today's video, I am going to share with you a dream that was sent to us by a dear sister. If you have been blessed with the opportunity to see this video today, I ask that you subscribe to my channel to join our happy Christian family and also share it with your friends and family so that they may also receive the message of the Lord. It is my hope and prayer that you will stay with me to the very end of the video to have a clear insight of the message. I am going to read it in the very same manner in which it was delivered to us. No part has been taken out and nothing has been added to the story. Pay close attention as I proceed with the reading. Greetings and peace be upon you once again, Joseph. I am the one who submitted my three dreams to you back in July of this year. I saw how well the video you made about me did, and I am very glad and grateful that you made it. As of writing this, last night, I had another dream that relates to the previous three dreams. This one is much more vivid than the former ones, so I wrote down what I saw to the best of my ability and submit what I have to you once more. I also wish to correct some mistakes in my previous letter. First of all, when comparing the ancient and modern cities, I said there was a body of water east of the two cities. That was a mistake. I meant to say west. I also saw several people point out that Tacoma doesn't rhyme with Gomorrah. That may be true. But I also want to bring up two other points. Both end with A and both have three syllables, three. I will now proceed to describe what I saw. I saw an aerial shot of the city of Seattle. The shot's back was to the west, and I was facing eastward inland. Then I saw a fiery mushroom cloud rise up from the downtown region of the city. I did not see any shockwave ravage through the surrounding districts and neighborhoods. In fact, I couldn't get a detailed look at the city at all. For the camera began to zoom into a specific part of Seattle, somewhere farther away from the carnage. The section was northeast of the city, near Discovery Park, and as the camera kept zooming in, it shifted its focus to the Ballard Harem Lock. I saw a boat move westward from the locks and into the greater sound. Also, I saw this boat from the aerial shot from earlier cycling, though the locks before the mushroom rose. I do not know why at that moment, why it focused on that boat in particular. It just did. When the mushroom cloud rose, the outer doors of the lock opened, and the boat moved away. In the section of Seattle as well, I did not see any carnage following the aftermath of any shockwave. And many boats passed by the original boat, heading towards the locks into the greater Lake Union, north of the downtown. I said to myself in that moment, does anyone care? It was as if the only thing that changed was that there was just a gigantic mushroom cloud above Seattle, not doing anything not even dropped from any nuke. It was just there. And everyone else just seemed tolerated. I looked around the passing boats, looking for anyone who seemed to care or even just noticed the cloud, but there was no one. But on the roof of the original boat, which looked to be a pleasure craft of some sort, I saw a mother and her daughter look up at the cloud, both hugged one another, and went downstairs. The camera kept zooming, focusing on the pleasure craft, then on the woman. It zoomed in so far that I was now assuming the perspective of the woman. The change of perspective occurred right before she was about to go downstairs. As she did so, she called a name. I couldn't hear what name it was, but I presumed it to be her husband, who was the captain of the craft. He came up and asked what was wrong. She told him to look out to the window, so he did and he was shocked at what he saw. He urged the two to head down into the lower deck of the boat, into the engine room whilst he stayed upstairs. So they hastily ran downstairs and sealed the door behind them. The room was dark and dirty. I understand that this room is expected to get very dirty, but for a boat this nice, it was very unkept. Even for commercial standards, this was unacceptable. I watched as the grime grow thicker and more loaded with filth. 
It covered everything, even the lights, and as it thickened, the lights began to dim as well. It got so dark that I couldn't even see the woman's daughter, who clung close to her mother. Then the walls of the boat began to dismantle and fall down. A gray natural light began to fill the room. The kind of light you would see on a cloudy day. As the walls completely fell down, we were no longer in Seattle, but instead in the port of Tacoma, near the Foss waterway. I didn't see the daughter anymore. I didn't even feel like I was looking through the woman's eyes anymore. I didn't feel like a spectator anymore. I now felt like I was there in person. I saw a giant dark cloud rise over Brown's Point, northward toward Seattle. Here there was no carnage either, but people did indeed notice the cloud and were running around in panic. I didn't know what to do either, so I did the same. And in my panic, I said something peculiar. I listed off a number of post-apocalyptic movies, books, and games like Mad Max and Fallout. I saw how we were absolutely fascinated and dreaded the apocalypse. And in our fearful curiosity, we created such works as a means to get idea of what to expect. And some of these movies and games like Fallout were based on what others in the past thought what the aftermath of nuclear war would be. But now we don't have to conjure up any works of fiction like those any more to get an idea of what it would be like. For now, we are in it firsthand. Now I'll admit, I have been a fan of works like those for a while. My favorite novel was Metro 2033, and I played games like Half-Life, its sequel, G-String, a mod for the game, which had one of the most realistic nuke scenes I had ever seen in a game. And Stalker Call of Pripyat. I am not saying that, what I saw in those games and books were real. I'm just saying that what I took in probably influenced that statement of mine. After I said this, a shockwave passed through the port and into the city. All the buildings around me were leveled and left in ruins. Telephone poles were thrown down, but surprisingly enough, I was left untouched. I walked around the newfound ruins. I saw no more people. It was completely barren ash was everywhere. I have never felt as dirty as I did in that dream. I came to a green building with its windows blown out and door kicked in. Standing at the entrance of the door was a police officer. His uniform was stained with so much soot that his navy blue turned into a disgusting wet black. He said something very interesting, yet scary to me. He said that all the emergency responders had been killed and all emergency services had become inoperable within the city of Seattle. And several Anon hackers, seeing this as an opportune time to strike, hijacked the WEA system and sent out an alert, declaring an anarchist state over the whole city and its districts, saying that no police, government, or militaristic enforcement would be in effect for 48 hours. How did he know this? Or why was this the most important detail he had to say to me? I do not know. Then I woke up and began to write down all that you are reading now. This dream was unique from the previous ones. The others vaguely hinted towards the destruction of the Seattle metropolitan area using biblical symbolism used for the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis and for the armies of Gog and Magog in Ezekiel. This one, however, was a lot more direct and unique in its symbolism. Am I saying that this dream is sent from God? No. Am I a prophet? No. Will any of this be guaranteed to happen? No. All I know is that, when comparing what I saw in my dreams to biblical symbolism, those examples that I have listed can best be compared to it. And in my previous letter to you, I drew some similarities between the two cities, to Sodom and Gomorrah. From a geographic standpoint, I saw that those within the comment section, people were saying, I thought the Sodom and Gomorrah of America is this, or the Sodom and Gomorrah of America is that. I am not claiming that these two cities are the modern variants of Sodom and Gomorrah. I was just drawing some connections between the ancient and modern. 
and I brought up very broad and vague comparisons between the two. Shouldn't be taken at face value. Besides, they were from a pure geographic standpoint. I didn't get into the ins and outs of the systems of the ancient and modern cities, and if this was truly a prophecy, that shall come true. I don't believe that judgment will just be upon this one corner of America, or the world, for that matter. For all sons of Adam are sinners and deserving of judgment. Let me repeat my point. I am not claiming to be a prophet, nor what I'm telling you is going to happen or not. I just had several dreams with a common theme. I see that you share many similar dreams others had. So I am sharing my dream to you. Thank you for watching to the end. Please help us get this message out to the rest of the world by forwarding it to all of your friends and family members. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so right away so that you can receive other videos on God's word in the days and weeks ahead. I am grateful to you and may God continue to bless you till our next meeting.